So we're here at the ST booth here at Mobile World Congress, and hi. Indeed, welcome to the ST booth at Mobile World Congress 19. And who are you? I'm Frédéric Golomez, and I will do a quick tour of uh, our demonstrations, latest innovation we are showcasing here. Uh, let's start with the artificial intelligence, where we are showcasing some nice um, applications running on our STM32 MCU. ST has a big role to play in the mobile world, right? A big role and a lot of uh, building blocks are coming from ST Microelectronics for any IoT devices. And this is one of the key blocks we are showcasing today. So, uh, this is uh, right here, this is like an uh, AI IoT device. Right here? Uh, yes, uh, here we have uh, an uh, handwriting uh, character recognition which has been ported directly on our L5 uh, microcontroller. So if uh, we write uh, S, T, it recognizes uh, the letters. Nice. T A. So there's actually AI on microcontrollers. It's yes. a big deal for ST to have this, right? It's a big deal to be able to, to port the artificial intelligence neural network into a small and compact MCU to be able to have AI on any kind of MCU. And uh, this one is also AI, right here, the it's demo. It's good classification demonstration, really mm -hmm. also on our MCU. Nice. And what kind of other things do you have around here? So moving to the sensor part with our imaging. Brand new, uh, brand new sensors, photonic sensors and also ambient light sensing. I will let Ken comment about that. Hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Ken. Um, I'm from the Imager Division based in Edinburgh in the UK, where we, uh, one of the big sites where we make our, uh, our time of flight sensors. Uh, and what I'm demoing here is the latest uh, generation where we actually have an 8x8 eight eight, uh, array. Now each of the numbers that you can see on the screen is actually representing a range in centimeters. So you can see that we're now starting to build up quite a nice three-dimensional understanding of what the seat looks like. So this could be used for touch to focus, for example, with, uh, with a camera system and a phone, and, and even start to build up a simple depth map um, of the scene. Uh, as so well. uh, is this the resolution? The resolution is 8x8, eight eight, and the range that you can see, the number that you can see in each of the zones, is the, uh, is the centimeter distance that, uh, that, that the target is from our device. What happens if you go over there? Can you so go if I go far? over there, so the, the, the maximum range will depend somewhat on the target that it's looking at. You can see we're ranging that gentleman there up to almost two meters. If the light level comes down, we can range further. Or if the target as the, the, the light level, if the light level is lower, we'll range further. Ah, and so you, less light is go further. It's good, it's good for us, yeah, correct. Because remember, within our device, we have a light source, which is a 940 nanometer laser. And then we have uh, the array of uh, light sensing diodes. Both of these elements, both the, the laser and the array, are, are lensed. So, so they're, have, they're very the, good at capturing light. you have it in the back too? Yeah, so we've got one mounted here. This is just a demo platform. Back and front? Back and front, yeah. How do you connect them to the tablet? It's coming in through USB. We have an ST uh, microprocessor as the host. Uh, and then it's the just a USB host to your little laser system. Correct. And uh, this is being adopted already? So this particular one is yet to enter mass production, but the previous generation, where we're only able to range uh, for one zone, um, has been in over 100 million phones already worldwide. So it's, uh, it's a big phones. success. Yeah. And it's called Time of Flight? Time of Flight is the underlying technology, um, but the key application, the key use case that we've had best success with is what we call laser autofocus, where we're using the range that we return on the target to help the camera system focus faster and more accurately. And we hope that so this device will So you're basically will, uh, helping the contrast-based autofocus correct. this way. Correct, correct. You're so, speeding it up. So we're essentially another element of a hybrid autofocus system. That's it's right. It's not phase detect. Different from phase it's detect. It's not dual pixel. No. It's laser autofocus. Correct. But it's in addition to, so where the phase detect data is less reliable, where the contrast data is less reliable, we can help with our exact range on the target. So they can all work uh, in conjunction with each other. Is there any chance this kind of stuff could do like uh, the same resolution as the actual pic the photos? I think that, every single pixel? That, that could happen. I think the, the, the natural thing, and, and in fact, we have a roadmap to higher resolution parts over the next couple of years. And so yes. for this to happen, you need uh, the laser. You can't just do it with a light that's there. You, you need to have an underlying light source, that's correct. You yeah. need to eliminate it. Yes, correct. So it's like a... So it's, you, you, you've already seen it, for example, inside some of the iPhone family with the, uh, the structured light solution with on infrared. the front of... And it's, it's also operating in the infrared, yes. That's, that's a right. different? 
It's slightly different technology, but working at the same wavelength. Yeah, we're working at 940 nanometers. Uh, I should say, although, although we've used the word laser, it's of course all eye safe, it's all class one. So uh, no problem with uh, damage to the human eye. Is there any chance it can go to a very long distance? Well, that's a good question. I think it, for, for this type of technology, yes, you, you, you can. And uh, you'll start to see systems on cars for self-driving called LiDAR. Um, which is much, much longer range, where you may operate up to 150, 200 meters. This LiDAR is different tech, tech it's, right? It, it, fundamentally, the underlying technology is very, very similar, but just implemented in a slightly different way. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let's so this move. is uh, the big deal for the SD? It's one of the big deals for the for SD. Uh, another new, brand new product is the uh, ILS sensing uh, Sensors we are recently announced last. So, um, what are we looking at? So, this small product is called uh, VD6281. It's the smallest color sensor in the market, 1.8 uh, per 1 millimeter. And it combines uh, three in one functionalities. The first one is color sensing, RGB uh, IR. It also combines ultraviolet uh, sensing, UV, UVA. And last but not least, it's also a flicker engine that is able to extract the light frequency to get rid of the bounding effect uh, on the image. So there on the, on the desktop, you had the actual chip? Yeah. And it's, why, why did I see those lights? Can you show it again? Sure. Uh, what is this? That's the, those are the colored photodiode in the circuit. So they color. The, they each have different color? Yeah, correct. That's the active it? array of the circuit. So we have several photodiodes that are colored with some uh, color filters, RGB, UV, and infrared uh, to sense light and provide the uh, information to the system. And uh, what, what happens when you, what, what okay. are you showing? So right there, this demonstration is what happens with uh, all recent smartphones in the market. So the light uh, in your uh, home are usually flicking. Your usual tungsten, neon, and, and fluorescent lights are usually 50 and 60 hertz. But with the modern lighting, uh, LEDs are flicking at total unknown frequencies that can go up to one kilohertz. So that's a total headache and a challenge for all camera systems today. And what our sensor is providing is the actual uh, frequency of the, of the light system flicking. We can compensate with some algorithms and find the right exposure time for the camera to get rid of the bounding effect on the image. How do you do that? So the flicker... But what does it have to do with the color sensor? Yeah. It's a two-in-one uh, product, so we are able to assist the camera for not only the camera, uh, let's say, white balance, uh, with RGB color tone tuning, but also we correct the bounding effect on the image. That's a two-in-one product, and that's the key differentiating factor in the market. So first step is to set the right exposure time with the camera to avoid the bounding. And in the second stage, we adjust the color rendering if it's a yellow, bluish color, you can compensate with true tone color sensing uh, with the product. And this, uh, this is true one in this tiny little chip. And uh, what do other people do? They only do it in software? Or? So usually, uh, competition is only able to perform white balancing with uh, conventional RGB, uh, let's say, filters. It's not fully accurate because you still miss the ultraviolet information. UV information is useful to indicate if you are indoor or outdoor in the, in the scene. It provides you artificial light or natural light information. All right. OK. So this is a big deal for the smartphone industry? Yes, indeed. The camera system complexity is increasing in the market. When you look at Samsung, Huawei, or all Chinese phones, the number of cameras uh, becomes no two, three, four times. We put the sensor, we just connect the sensor with USB as a proof of concept to adjust the white balance of the camera and also the uh, flicker uh, bounding effect to correct and get rid of the, uh, the bounce on the image. Yes. And this, uh, this color, what do you call it, color uh, sensor? 
is important for photography or for what? The main application of the color sensor is to help the camera system to provide a true tone and accurate color to the, to the end user. So auto white balance. Auto white balance and also good videos without burning effect, whatever the circumstance. Uh, this, without flicker effect and bounding effect to avoid any, you know, uh, uh, blur image or bending on the on the on the picture. Nice. And on top, you can also integrate the sensor behind the glass because it's very high uh, sensitivity product, and you can afford to have this kind of uh, cover glass backside that is almost opaque. Nice. So if you put that here, you can still correct. So having that sensor, the photos and videos are going to be better. Yes, definitely. It improves user experience for everyday life. Whatever the use case, front integration or rear integration into the phone, that's really a breakthrough application. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was cool. OK. So let's continue the tour. So here we have some uh, demonstrations from partners uh, using our, uh, our sensor and actuator product. Then, uh, this is uh, one of the stars you will see also at Embedded World, the uh, new STM32 MPU, MP1, that is uh, combining an M, a Cortex-M and a Cortex-A. Uh, so it's uh, a brand new product from ST and we are really proud of this integration. Cortex, double Cortex-A and Cortex-M integrated into a single chip. And so now we have an open Linux uh, and a full ecosystem on top of the STM32 ecosystem. This is a great news. This is a 60 GHz RF transceiver. It will be good for smartphones to have some high bandwidth transmission between two devices. I think we can go back to that demonstration right, quickly. Right, right, right after? Yes. Uh, let's go, sorry, let's go. Let's go, go this way around. I'm sorry. So we have a cellular. collection of, uh, of demonstrations related to connectivity, yeah. so with Bluetooth, Bluetooth mesh, yeah. thread mesh. Moving there, we have LoRa and Fix Sigfox connectivity also running on our STM32 uh, boards. Yeah. Then here we have the NFC reader for payment application. That is also a product that has been recently announced. Nice. And we'll move to the security part. Should we check the, this one? We, we will we'll ah, take it. Okay. Oh, she's, he is here. He's here. Oh, here. Okay. So, Philip, if you want to introduce the price. Yes. Hello. Hello. So here we introduce uh, ST25R uh, uh, 3916, which is uh, our latest NFC um, front-end chip. Uh, the demo of the purpose is to show you um, a payment. Yeah. So with this chip. You can have a look. That's. Uh, so what did you use uh, there? It is my banking card. Your real one? Yes, a real one. And uh, so, so it's just using the standard system of contactless? Yes. Yes. And uh, what's special about this? Um, there is a new uh, specification. The EMV, Eurocard Mastercard Visa 3.0 specification. And this chip and this board is uh, certified. EMV code 3.0. <coughs> we have passed the test in the laboratory. EMVCO, so what is yes. EMVCO? EMVCO is a specification uh, required for the uh, contactless reader uh, embedded in the POS and the MPOS. So, uh, anybody else have the solution or is it brand new? Um, the, all the new MPOS. Uh, um, have to be uh, in the coming months. All the new MPOS put on the market have to be uh, EMD code 2.0 compliance. So it's increasing the security or uh, increasing the the, the, um, the capability uh, to to make a very nice uh, contactless payments. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you very Thank much. You. Let's continue. Yeah. Let's move to one of the big moves also in the smartphone industry, that is the embedded SIM. Yeah. And I will uh, let Adlor present the demonstration. All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. So who are you? 
I'm Manon Sixou. I'm uh, working for Secure Microcontroller Division and I'm responsible of the general communication for this division. And uh, here you have a new solution for eSIM, right? Yeah, that's this is a big deal for the future of the smartphone yes, industry? Yes, it's a big deal, but the main message and the main important message that we reach and we exceed 1 billion units for the advanced secure microcontroller ST33. So can you come a little closer to Mike? So you said 1 billion ST33? More than 1 billion units for ST33. What is that? Is the, so it's already over there in the market? This is the secure microcontroller, and the importance of the secure microcontroller is that it's been designed to fit with all the security requirements for all the application, security applications, such as SIM or eSIM, embedded secure element, but also automotive M2M or TPM. And one of the main market is the SIM and eSIM, and the deployment and eSIM, embedded SIM. Then the eSIM based on the ST33 now able to fit with all the requirements, whatever the form factor and whatever the device. So do you and provide the best eSIM solution on the market? Sure. Are you and the market we, leader for eSIM? We are the market leader for the eSIM and we reach more than 100 million units on the eSIM. This is the future of the SIM connection. And it's uh, very easy to use? I haven't yes. tried it yet, so it's, it's just no it's need to a SIM card. No, no need a SIM card. You can use the SIM card, but you can use also an eSIM. Nice. That's very cool. But usually when, when devices have eSIM, sometimes they, they remove the second SIM card. Is it important to only have... The difference between SIM and eSIM is that the eSIM can manage the switch between all the MNOs. With the SIM, we are connected with a specific MNOs. With an eSIM, we can move from one to another MNOs. It's a really a great advancement for, for the user, the final user. But it's connected uh, it's directly, physically to the hardware. Yes, to it's the, directly to the modem. sold. Yes, it's directly sold on the PCB of the device. And an eSIM is, is flexible to get any SIM. Absolutely. Thing. Information in. Yes, the eSIM in fact is configured thanks to the remote system and the uh, specific platform. And is eSIM 100% secure? Uh, sure. Impossible to hack this eSIM system? It's a secure element. Is the, sec is the secure element like a classical? Is the really secure element and it fits with the last generation of uh, security feature we embed to fit? with all the last generation of attacks. Is it possible to upgrade the eSIM systems or are they just secure forever, never need to update it? You know that the security is not great forever. Then you have to evaluate with the attacks. Then the eSIM, the next generation of the eSIM will be designed by our fab. Then we will embed another generation in the few next year. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah, let's continue. Here we have a demonstration uh, on the imaging as well, but this time on the automotive world. So in vehicle Where we have in, ve in vehicle monitoring, so for driver monitoring, so powered by our imaging sensor. And let's move to the, to the other demonstration. With telematics and GNSS, and I will uh, let Pascal present that. Demo. Cool. All right. Hello. Hello. Are you on? Hey, so, so who are you? Hello, my name is Pascal Avion from ST Microelectronics. Yeah. Um, I'm here to present um, MTP. So MTP stands for Modular Telematics Platform. So what it is, basically, it's a set of modules. Um, connectivity modules, LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy. This goes in the car? Yeah, that's, that's, this is a pre-development uh, platform. So it's, that would be uh, the main brain of the car, or what is this? Um, that's the brain of the connected car. So it's yeah. where all the communication is, is taking place okay. over all those uh, wireless and wired con uh, connectivity um, uh, standards. Uh, uh, CAN, Ethernet, FlexRay, that's wired. Wireless with uh, LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth for energy. Also and positioning, we have precise positioning. And, and this CAN um, technology and all that is very old technology in the car industry, right? But it's not very secure, and you want to make it more secure, or what are you doing here? Yeah, exactly. So on this uh, development environment called MTP, we have attracted uh, working on the Telemapo 3P, that is a security uh, processor here, we have attracted um, an ecosystem of partners, uh, also security companies such as Caramba Security, Argus, and also Airbiquity uh, for the software update of the year. So those companies are porting their solutions, security solutions on Telemapo 3P. 
and yeah. we deliver to the market this solution that is um, pre-integrated, fully working, and we have customers such as Ficosa, and they have, they have used this platform in the development of their car comp platform. This is a real product that goes in a real it, car? It is a real product that is going to a car, and they, are, they have been using the same philosophy, based on Telemaco GP, they're using what we did there on the MTP, and then they have, they have used some of the modules are the same, some of the other modules are, are something different targeted to their applications. So when you but say Telemaco GP, what is, which part is that? So Telemaco GP is here in the middle, this is the processor, it's the security which, processor. Which one is that? Is it running an ARM Cortex something? Yeah, so Cortex it's, A? it's a Cortex A7 double core, dual core, and there is a Cortex M3. So this is the new uh, STM32 MP, no, no, what no, do you no. call it? Or is it not? It is, uh, uh, Telemaco is, uh, is a family of processors uh, dedicated for automotive, created for automotive with high robustness to high temperature, also for safety relevant system ASIL-B, and dedicated around a very strong security core with an HSM. So the, the HSM is the key element here of Telemaco Trippi, and that's that's why also all those partners have been attracted to work with us on, on security. What's the HSM? HSM stands for Hardware Security Module. And uh, you're showing the some kind of, um, what are you doing here, right. hacking it? Yeah, so this is what we are developing together with uh, Caramba Security. So Caramba is a, is a security expert company, yeah. and we are working together here um, on, on a security system to protect the Linux application, application space in the Cortex S7. So what, what I'm doing here on this PC, um, so I'm connected, so here this is a debug console connected to the processor, and I'm, I'm going to attack. Okay, okay. You attack. I'm going to attack the processor. So first, um, I'm doing, you know, the, the security is implemented, the Caramba car wall application here is implemented on Telemaco. So I will attack the system that is already protected. And this is what's going to happen. So I'm trying to break in the system and uh, send an exploit. So injecting the exploit and it doesn't work. Why? Because it's protected by car wall. So now I'm doing the same, exactly the same, but using a port that is on purpose, not protected. So this is what's going to happen. I'm attacking this other port. Again, I'm trying to take control of the machine, of this Linux machine here. And what we normally will we'll see, okay, it succeeded to get the rootkit. So now, using this, so I'm connected over Ethernet, so using the network, I can manipulate this system that is the car, actually. So here, this is a Windows uh, laptop, but I manage the rootkit. So I have the full system. This is Linux, and this is Linux is running here. So I, I manage to take control of, of this computer in the car, and I can do all nonsense that, that I want. So for example, so we have a little application running here on Telemaco uh, that is an attack. So, and I'm doing an attack on the vehicle. Door without opening. Which is doing You owned, or what does it say? It says airbag deployed, oh. um, speed exceeded, and the doors are open. So it's really what you don't want to happen when you are driving a car. And here we are able to really to hack the vehicle completely. This is when the car wall is not active. Is this a groundbreaking, uh, very revolutionary for the auto market? Nobody has this. Nobody has such a wide ecosystem of security on a single platform. Uh, with Argus providing the intrusion detection, with Caramba Security providing car wall, and all, with all the hardware and mechanism implemented in Telemaco Trippi, such as uh, isolation with, with several cores, such as the HSM secure boot, and also um, TEE for, for Linux. So nobody has such a strong security architecture on the automotive processor. Cool, all right, thanks a lot. Cool, and... Uh, so this is Clothing the Tour. I hope you enjoyed. That was great. And see you next year for yeah. the thanks next so edition of Mobile World Congress. So ST is big in the better world, but also big in the mobile world. It's, we are everywhere, and we are covering markets like industrial, automotive, consumer market. So that's why we are everywhere, yeah? This is one of the demos that kind of shows all the different stuff you're doing, right? Yes, exactly. It's uh, our interactive table that allows us to show that we are covering a lot of industrial applications.
a lot of trying to have an overview of ST is a big big challenge. Sorry. That's why you have a nice uh, exactly. way to see all the different things. You all have. the different things we we have, and you can see more at Embedded World that is happening at the same uh, at the same time. So okay, let's have a look go. also.